start things off today, it's been one year since several crop producers in Wyoming and western Nebraska were abruptly cut off from their water supply during one of the most crucial times for irrigation. On July 17th of 2019, the Goshen Gearing Fort Laramie Irrigation District's Tunnel No. 2 collapsed. This caused a breach in the main canal that ultimately dried up water supplies to the south side of the North Platte River. This story was a especially heartbreaking occurrence for many who went through the ordeal. And one year later, we look back on the crisis to see how things are continuing to progress. Over the span of 42 days in the summer of 2019, during a very critical time for irrigation, several producers lost access to water following a disastrous breach in the goshen gearing Fort Laramie Irrigation District Tunnel No. 2. In total, 107,000 acres in the North Platte River Valley of Nebraska and Wyoming were affected by the disaster. In other words, roughly 35% of the total acres irrigated by surface water in the North Platte River Valley were unable to access water they needed at a time they needed it most. Many producers were facing the potential of their crops withering in the climbing heats of late summer, and in many cases, a sizable economic loss. The outlook at the time was dire to say the least. So for corn and uh, beans, uh, I don't think uh, it's too optimistic. Um, they are at their critical growth stage. Uh, corn is uh, at their uh, reproductive stage from V12 to uh, blister. Um, so they, this is stage they need most water. Same thing for dry edible beans. Uh, they're about to flowering and some they already are. Um, again, they need water at this stage. So if it's really stressed at this point uh, and for next you know, few weeks, uh, it, corn will be a total loss and there might be some left on the beans um, and for sugar beets uh, that's probably the uh, most uh, optimistic crop in this situation. When the problem first arose there were plenty of questions to go around the biggest of which were how did it happen and who would hold responsibility for the repairs. These were two of the first questions that needed to be answered before funding and repairs could begin. However, that task was much easier said than done. Yeah, this is a really interesting situation. The canal system here was built by the Bureau of Reclamation in the early 1900s, um, and then those canals are maintained by local irrigation districts, and there are two districts that are responsible for this tunnel. And so as we were looking at a structure of its age um, and the extremely wet uh, weather events that we've had this year, um, that makes it really difficult to pinpoint um, a cause and then who's responsible uh, for this canal break. Local authorities were getting up to speed just as quickly as they could get information. One thing that quickly became evident was the fact that not only was there a problem with tunnel number two, but tunnel number one would need repairs as well. With livelihoods on the line, tensions were beginning to run high. Those on the front lines of the event were fast to act in trying to initiate repairs. However, with a job this size, there are always several laws to work around and many steps that need to be taken before much real progress can begin to take shape. The first two or three days, we, had made, we were um, in a, an aggressive mode to start putting it back together, to do um, whatever was necessary to get the, get the system up and running again. And after about the third day, we started having to deal with uh, laws, statutes, uh, channels to have to go through. And uh, after about the fifth day, I was ready to yank anybody that opened their mouth up to yank their lips off. It, it is a very, very frustrating, very irritating law when you're in a hurry to try to save the livelihood of, of individuals. But regardless of never the says, you have to back up and take a breath and readdress it in a manner that's civil and level-headed. So, However, in the end, repairs began, and for the most part, things seem to be getting back to normal. Water is once again flowing to producers. Nonetheless, there have been restrictions put in place for the amount of water that is currently accessible. Tunnels 1 and 2, uh, they put ribs the full length of those tunnels and they figure they are restricted back to 80 to 85% of their normal flow. So right now they're only pushing about 1200 second feet through those tunnels. That's all they can get through them at this point in time. 
Tunnel number three, consequently, once the water gets down to there, uh, the Nebraska growers are going to be restricted to about 75% of their normal. So they are running, I won't say short of water, but they're running with less water than what they've had in the past. Uh, they started the water season sooner in hopes that, you know, they might be able to build the soil moisture profiles up, uh, have water there to draw on uh, for the, at least the beets and the corn that are deeper rooted that they could draw on some moisture from the soil. Looking back at where we were and where we are now, one year later, things seem to be on the up and up with spirits much higher than they were at this time last year. I guess everybody was in a state of shock. I mean, nothing like this had ever happened in the past. It was all brand new. Uh, tensions started to run pretty high because all of a sudden you don't have water. You don't have too much. You don't have any. And there are very, very few wells over on the south side of the river. So for those growers that had wells, that might have helped them out a little bit. But for the most part, uh, it, uh, tensions are running high. Things kind of mellowed out as the season went along last summer into the fall. We finally got water in the ditch. Uh, they were able to water the beets and the corn. The dry beans had failed uh, just because they're a shallow rooted crop and could not draw on any soil moisture that might have been there. Since then, it's, uh, you know, growers have come to accept it, I believe. Uh, they've got water back in the ditch and that's what they wanted to see the most. They are watering their crops. Uh, things are looking well, even though they're kind of dry out here, but uh, things are looking well. So that's kind of what the mood's been. It's went from uh, shock to probably anger to some point to kind of maybe back to normal. All in all, it's pretty amazing to see what a difference can be made in just one year. 